just a quick so, introduction of uh, Dr. Mela. So currently, she's a ge- she's actually a general surgeon and currently a medical advisor for a Breast International Group, which is based in Belgium. And uh, she had her um, medical doctor training from uh, University of Santo Tomas. That's her uh, medical degree from and her residency at the Philippine General Hospital. So currently, she's working on cancer uh, research. So uh, two, two lectures ago, we had uh, research topic selection and literature search. So our third topic for our uh, nine-part lecture series will be on research proposal writing with uh, Dr. Carmela. So, ma'am? Okay, um, I hope na nabibinig nyo ako clearly. Okay. Um, so, magandang umaga or magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Good evening to everyone. Thank you sa mga mentors and sa mga students for joining. And I hope na sana, uh, I hope na makatulong yung lecture na ito for, for everyone. A lot of the things that I will say are more focused for the our K-12 students. But um, maybe some will also be practical for the mentors. Um, so it, this lecture, I hope that you will be um, able to ask me questions. I'll be very, very happy to answer your questions. So, um, okay. It, so, um, I will give a brief lecture a brief introduction about myself yung mga iba na mention na kanina ni John pero i will also give a little bit of picture about the kind of work sa cancer research uh, sorry tabales ayan and um mga uh, considerations before writing your research proposal and then we will go to the step by step um, of um, step by step of writing a research proposal and um, I will also give some practical tips now for me I also do on my own or I also use um, whenever we are asked to do uh, research proposals so a brief back background um, my my career story is what I can say here as a long and winding road it was not a straight path um, unlike research, like ko ano yung discuss ko today, it's research planning. Usually, um, for a research plan, kailangan step by step. Pero in our careers as researchers, um, usually maraming mga nangyayari na unplanned, na hindi mo ay expect So it becomes a long and winding uh, road or a, a very uh, colorful story. So as mentioned uh, by John, um, I am a medical doctor. Um, I sa UST, and then I decided I want to take up general surgery. So I did my residency training in PGH and in Rizal Medical Center. Then I worked for a while in Singapore General Hospital. So my whole life, I, I, I mean, my whole training uh, period, I trained to become a surgeon for 14 years. And in my mind, that's what I really wanted to do. Pero somehow, nagkaroon ng opportunity to come here in Europe. And what actually led me here in Europe is research. And for this reason, dun ako nag-start to become a surgical research fellow at, in Brussels, Belgium. And then eventually, I am here at uh, working as a medical advisor in Breast International Group. So, um, tapos as an addition, I am a proud mentor of SIDHI and also a member of the European Society of Surgical Oncology um, Steering Committee member. So, um, siguro ang gusto kong message dito for our students most especially is that be open to the different opportunities that may surround you um, because you never know ano mga surprises ahead. So, dito sa slide na to, um, I want to give, um, uh, like, I want to show you the big picture. You know, what is it outside, what is it like outside of the Philippines um, in terms of research? And um, 
siguro yung key message from this slide is the teamwork needed um, in order to really do um, research that will create an impact. So, makikita nyo dito yung um, there is a part where um, etong aming executive board from the Breast International Group. So, we are a group that is focused on international collaborations for breast cancer research. So these are our executive boards. So they, this, they, this are, this, these are the decision uh, makers sa aming group. But, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. So the next point is that etong Breast International Group is not just one group. It is composed of 55 groups all over the world. So in order to bring about or to put everything together, this is the headquarters in Belgium. So um, I am part of the headquarters. We are 40 people. And um, along with the investigators or the scientists and the doctors, we also have a partnership with our patients. So it takes a lot of teamwork to do research. No? So um, this is an example of the kind of cancer research that we are doing around the world. No, um, uh, just to show you na yung yung research. I, I ang key message dito is that we have existed for more than twenty years, and actually, yung re it's not like when you do research tomorrow, like one month, there is already a result. Usually, yung mga kind ng research, it takes one year, three years, five years. Usually, when you start it, you don't know how it will really end. And sometimes, it's hard to project when it will finish. But it has a limit. And um, research is slowly building on little by little, little by little, answering one little question at a time. Pero yun nga, it takes a lot of teamwork. Um, as we have said, the path of research is a long and winding road. It's challenging. Sometimes when you start, hindi mo makita where it will end. So, kailangan may adequate amount of preparation because it, it requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of um, uh, resources. Pero I couldn't stress enough the importance of starting. And that's why I'm very, very proud of Sid Sidhi. Kasi itong, itong mentorship part, um, et itong uh, possibility to uh, encourage students to embark on research, it's very, very important um, to start early on. Why do we need to do research? Um, because we are able to see unmet needs. Ibig sabihin, may, mayroon kang nakitang something na, uy, ito, wala pang solution dito. Or, this is a problem, it, it needs a solution. So, this is one reason why we do research. The next is, you don't just do research for the sake of doing research. You want to do research because you want to help improve something. You want to create an impact, whether it's in your school, it's in your community, or it's in your country, or it's in a uh, global impact. So you do it because you want to change something for the better. And sometimes we also do research, or a lot of times we do research kasi may nakita kang opportunity for uh, funding, or minsan may nakita kang opportunity for supporting education, or like um, um, supporting your further education. So gusto mo mag-submit ng isang proposal, in order to uh, receive financial support. So this is also true of research. So doing research, it starts uh, with a good question. I think um, what the first lecture series of Sidhi, ito yung, ito yung ano natin, focus, no? R starting with a very, very good question, with a very precise question. Kailangan malinaw yung question, and we should be asking the right question. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Tapos, of course, it needs teamwork. As you can, I will show you later. It needs teamwork. It will need time. It will need budget. Ito, just to say na, 
ang mga scientists sometimes hindi sila masyadong aware dun sa realities of um, find, yung, yung kailangan ng money to, in order to do something. So, as early as now, yung kahit students pa lang kayo or kahit we are young re researchers, we should pay attention that it's free to it's free to 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 have an idea it's free to dream pero it in order for you to make it happen you need to be aware of the time and you need to be aware of the budget needed to it, to make it a reality and most important about research is we need um kailangan natin ng what we call integrity ibig sabihin ano tayo true uh, ta tayo ay uh, tapat sa ating paggawa ng research and this is very very important and it's something na kailangan bata pa lang tayo we understand to be transparent um, and you know to show step by step what we did and we need to be honest with our research so um, and this is what the research plan will be all about kailangan yung ibang researchers natitingin dun sa iyong work, maintindihan nila step by step how you did your research. And uh, this one, I think, will be covered in the next uh, lecture series or in the succeeding uh, lecture series, presenting your research. Kasi pag may ginawa kang research, hindi pwedeng tinago mo lang sa sarili mo. You need to share it. Kasi it will help other researchers identify more questions that will carry on the path of research. So, ano na yung mga ano to, specific steps na, na uh, in order to conduct research, no? Um, today, ang pag-uusapan natin is itong first part, writing a research plan. I believe um, John and Florence, no, meron pa tayong ibang lectures about yung experimental design, conducting the research. So, Hindi ko to masyadong if focus plus, plus yung writing and presenting the research. I think it will be covered later on. Uh, so, dito tayo sa writing a research plan. And as you can see here, um, yung research plan is very, very important. I think ito yung malaking bulk um, ng importante to prepare your research or to make a plan. And um, what is it about? It is about defining your question, defining the target population of your research, um, defining how you plan to address your question, and then preparing all the tools that are needed to gather data. Okay, so... Um, for writing your research plan or any for writing your research plan actually you have to anticipate na maraming steps and i outlined here ito first of all magsusulat ka muna ng yung parang pre-writing uh, part you need to compose it you need to reread uh, read it again you need to revise it edit and then finally you will submit so bago ka makarating dito sa part na to step by step Ito, step by step, meron talagang specific steps na kailangan gawin. And that's why we are the mentors, at least of SIDHI, are here to help the students. So, kasi dahil maraming steps, um, the mentors are here to help the students uh, go through the different steps. So, ano yung mga basic components ng isang research proposal? So, yung research proposal, what we are speaking of is everything that you need before you actually start the research. So, um, hindi pa ito yung actual data gathering. Ito muna yung lahat ng preparatory work before you actually do your research. So, ang basic components is usually your title, your introduction and literature review, and then you have here defining your objectives and your hypothesis. And then the materials and methods. Important to understand the timelines and then your budget or your required resources. And then, of course, your references in bibliography. So I would just like to say that yung ganitong format, 
usually in any in most of the situations whether in school whether in um, at work or whether in the philippines or abroad or Usually, kapag ka nag ask na mga research proposal, oh ito yung usual na kailangan. Okay. So, um, makikita nyo dito sa kabilang uh, column yung mga specifics of um, para sa, sa bawat component. Okay. So, I will go through each component one by one. And um, as we go through, please, ano to, um, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, uh, to ask some questions. Okay? So first, yung title ng inyong research project. Okay? So the title has to be concise, precise, interesting, and focused. So basically, isang basa pa lang na mga tao gets na nila kung ano yung gusto mong gawing research, no? So, usually, um, usually, um, ito yung mga components ng isang title. So, usually, sinasabi nila kung ano yung uh, uh, research population or, um, or material under investigation. Usually, we define the intervention. And sometimes, you also give a basic um, idea of the, the scope uh, of the of or the purpose of the research. So, eto katulad nitong example. I am I am personally involved in this study. So, kinuha ko siya example. So, this is one of the this is a clinical trial in breast cancer and the study is entitled a study of pertuzumab in addition to chemotherapy and trastuzumab as adjuvant therapy in participants with human epidemic, um, HER2 positive primary breast cancer. So I tried to highlight here, in this kind of title, gets mo na agad, this is about breast cancer patients. Anong kind ng breast cancer patients? HER2 positive breast cancer patients. Tapos, ano yung intervention? Ito, addition of this drug, which is pertuzumab, at adding it to chemotherapy and trastuzumab sa particular um, sa, 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 sa setting na to, adjuvant therapy. So, ibig sabihin, yung magbabasa ng title na to, gets niya na agad which patients or which uh, population we are speaking of at ano yung balak mong gawin. You want to understand the impact of this particular drug for this particular patients. So, this is one example. Um, there are many, many examples. Pero ito yung key na dapat nyong siguro tandaan. Be precise. Okay? So, um, the next point is that yung introduction and literature review. Um, itong introduction and literature review, um, ito yung parang tinatawag natin na background of the study. At ang, at ang goal nito is that you will be able to show the big picture, ano yung existing knowledge. And then slowly, you will try to narrow the, the, the problem. And ipapakita mo ngayon through your literature review, okay, para kang nagbibuild ng puzzle na, okay, ano yung alam na ng mga tao? Ano yung mga missing information na kailangan nating maintindihan? Okay? So, it's basically a process of narrowing the, 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 the big picture and narrowing it to a very, very simple and precise um, definition of what you want to study. Okay, so um, yung, yung introduction and literature review. So yun, it's a process of really trying to simplify your research question. Kasi maraming research questions at maraming Maraming, maraming uh, things that we need to, to answer. Pero yung research natin is always time-bound. Ibig sabihin, may limit parate kung up to when we can do the research. So, ibig sabihin, we cannot answer all the questions. So, pag, dahil sa ganito, kailangan, mag, kung pwede mong i-focus yung research mo, into one or two questions 
this will help you a lot. Okay, so but I think na, na discussed na to before about how you should try to define your research question and what are the components or the, the, the practical tips to actually define a research question, to have a research question. Pero ito yun, what is the problem to be solved? Are there existing solutions? Which among these solu existing solutions are the best? Or what and what are the limitations of each? And pag na-identify mo na yung limitations, ngayon you will need to state, so ano yung gusto mong gawin ngayon ba after identifying the limitations of these different research? So practical tips. Um, when you write your introduction, uh, it doesn't need to be um, a, a long a long introduction. It actually has to be concise and straight to the point. So as I mentioned, give the whole picture first, then slowly, slowly, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in to the actual problem that you want to address. Okay lang kahit it's just one problem that you want to address. At least one major problem. Um, so you don't need to answer 20 questions through your research. If you could answer one or two questions through your research, and if you will be able to show how you answer this question step by step, then that is good. That's what we, we need uh, from, from most researchers. So our practical tip when I try to do an introduction or a literature search, what I first try to do is I gather 10 papers, 10 relevant papers, 10 lang muna, okay? And um, I, I organize them in this way, author and year published, tapos in identify ko, okay, what is the sample size and what is the population that they tried to understand, Tapos, I try to uh, tabulate ano yung mga outcomes that they measured or the endpoints that they measured. Then, I try to organize ano yung mga results nila. Tsaka, usually with the statistical significance. Then, I try to write or try to identify, okay, ano yung mga limitations ng each study. Okay? Usually, yung limitations, sinasabi ng authors yan sa kanilang, ano, sa kanilang paper. Or, kung hindi man, syempre, you need to also identify it. Pero usually, sinasabi ng, ano yan, ng authors sa kanilang discussion, ano yung limitation. So, for example, limitation is like very, very small yung uh, population or hindi enough time yung, yung, yung ob observation time. So, um, I try to organize this, and then by the time na makarating ako sa part na to, sa limitations, then makikita mo na yung gaps in the knowledge or yung missing information na kailangang um, ma-address. So, yun. And then, um, it's a matter of putting this into a paragraph, and then um, sometimes I also include this table in my literature review. So, the point is, in that background, you don't need 50 references. No. What you need are maybe maximum 20 to 30. Pero the point is, yung 20 or 30 references na yon, or even 10, the point is, they have to be relevant and they need to help you to narrow down or to focus your research question. So, ano yung next step? Kapag ngayon na narrow down mo na at nakita mo na, okay, ano ang iyong research question? Ito na, kailangan nating intindihan how will you try to answer your research question? So, ito yung papasok dun sa materials and methods. So, sabihin ko na, for me, for example, if I review a research proposal, ito ang tinitingnan ko. Yung step-by-step -step na description kung how you intend to answer your research question. So, ano yung usual na um, part ng materials and methods? 
So usually yung iyong hypothesis. So I, I'm sure na nabanggit na sa mga students yan, yung null hypothesis and yung H0 and H1 hypothesis. And then um, next is yung yung target population and how many um, how many uh, subjects you you want to um, be involved in your research. Then your objectives. And then your endpoints are what we call your outcome, outcome that you want to measure, and then tools for measurement. Tapos, ito yung more detailed analysis plan or uh, statistical plan. So, ano tong mga to? You want to be able to say, ano yung inclusion and exclusion criteria. Let's say you are trying to study, um, let's say, at uh, 20, uh, sa, uh, para kunyari naisip mo, okay, how you want to study students, the behavior of students in your, um, in your uh, school uh, towards examinations, let's say. Gusto mo lang bang i-understand uh, or pag-aralan female students or male students? Do you want to under do you want to do the research among the grade 6 students or also the um, uh, grade 12 students. So, yan. Meron ka ngayong inclusion and exclusion criteria. You have to be very precise sino o ano yung isasali mo sa iyong research. Next is how many samples to include. So, ito, um, in, in more complex research, usually, kailangan mo ng um, help from a, a person with a statistical training to help you decide Ano ba? Ilang, ilang students? 10 students, 30 students, 40 students, 550 students, 100 students. So, merong mga calculation na kailangan gawin. Pero, for the purpose of doing research sa, sa, sa level ng K-12, I think, and especially in this kind of situation, um, meron tayong mga limitations. Uh, um, wait lang. John, give me a moment. Ha? Give me a moment. Uh, okay, yeah. So, uh, wait. Copy, copy. Please, could you tell Irma not to move? Thank you. Um, hello. Ayan. So, um, for for the sample size, um, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng um, pandemic, so, mahirap din to say that, okay, you will analyze 50 students kasi baka, baka hindi feasible, baka hindi kaya to gather 50 students. So, it's possible na you will need to consider ano yung um, realistic na sample size that you will be able to get. So, this is for the purpose of doing simple uh, research. Um, the next is that you will need to um, specify how you came up with the sample size. So, ibig sabihin nito, um, kailangan mong sabihin dun sa iyong research proposal, how did you decide that you will study, let's say, 10 students versus 30 students? And it can be many, many reasons, pero the important thing is you need to document how you came up with this. In, in more complex research, for example, in cancer research, I the statistical calculation of how you came up with the sample size. Pero for the purpose of our K-12 students, probably um, hindi lahat feasible to get statistical help. But just suffice it to say na you may need to consider how how long you need to observe um, a specific, how, what, how, many, how, how much type of data you need to gather, how long you need to observe your data, how long you need to monitor. So, but as an example, let's say, for a patient, I will speak about breast cancer patient. Let's say, um, meron tayong breast cancer patient and um, yung kanyang disease, alam mo na based from your literature review na pwedeng bumalik or mag-recur within one year. Iba sabihin yung time that you need to study this particular patient will be one year. 
And it means na kapag um, dapat if a factor in mo yan dun sa number of patients na kailangan mong pag-aralan. Kasi pag nag in, pagka, 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 pagka kunyari, pinag-aralan mo lang yung patient mo ng six months, you will not be able to understand the real outcome of the patient. Kasi ang expectation mo, one year pa magre-recur yung, or parang in, within one year mo pa makikita yung actual outcome ng iyong patient. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan marami kang makuhang pasyente na para mapatunayan mo talaga na okay, yung observation mo ay um, totoo at talagang nakikita mo yung result na dapat mo, na hinahanap mo. Parang ganun. So, what will you measure exactly? So, ito yung tinatawag natin na endpoint. Kunyari, um, and probably I will give you a, an example later on. So, um, yung bit, difference between objective and endpoint. So, what are the measuring tools that you will use? Will you use a survey? Will you use um, um, uh, specific experimental design? Um, will you use um, uh, some sort of app? Will you use a particular um, computer program? Something like this. Um, the next is that, okay, you need to have an assessment. Feasible ba? O ibig sabihin, kaya bang gawin? Pwede bang gawin? Kasi baka mamaya yung nyari, survey tool na kailangan mo, hindi pala available sa Pilipinas. Or yung, yung measuring tool, hindi pala, hindi, pala, um, uh, hindi pala ito yung appropriate for the outcome that you want to measure. So, you need to check. Uh, kasama din dito, kunyari, you will do a specific design of a, of a, a particular product. Yung materials ba na kailangan mo, is it available in your community or in the Philippines? So, yan, kailangan natin i-factor in yan. Then, kailangan natin i-mention, okay, ano yung mga information na i-collect mo? Data that you need to collect. So, kukunin mo ba ang, kunyari, if we're speaking about patients, o oh, yung age ng patient, yung gender, yung... Um, uh, kung saan sila nakatira, kung saan probinsya, etc. So, ililista mo ngayon yan, yung mga data na kailangan mong i-collect. Kasi gusto mo ngayon maintindihan, kaya mo bang i-collect lahat to? Paano mo i-collect yung mga data na yan? Then, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, until when you need to collect. So, ibig sabihin, katulad ng sinabi ko, kapag yung outcome na ina-anticipate mo is mangyayari lang within one year, ibig sabihin, yung research mo, hindi pwedeng less than one year, magiging probably two years siya or one year and six months. So, yun, kailangan mong isipin how long you need to collect your data. And ito, especially for mga, for mga uh, surveys, paano kung yung survey mo eh, kulang yung data? May mga information na hindi na na-collect. So, how will, how will you factor that in? Diba? And then, Last part ng iyong uh, materials and methods, you need to describe paano mo masasabi na may, na may effect yung iyong research. So, what, what will determine kung ano yung e effect ng iyong research or what will determine whether what you are observing is different from your control. So, ito, I would like to zoom in a bit more about the objectives and the endpoints. So, endpoints. Kasi ito, core, core ito ng research methodology. So, when you, when you start or when you write your objectives, you have to be smart. Meaning, it has to be specific, it has to be measurable, achievable, relevant and time based ibig sabihin kailangan yung yung pinopropose mong um uh, objective something na kaya mong masagot within a specific period of time so at kailangan masagot mo siya in a way na pwede mong 
ma-quantify or pwede mong ma-measure kung ano yung, ano yung naging result. Ang suggestion ko dito sa objectives, I would say para to make it easy for you, maximum three. Maximum. It can be two or three. Pero ang napansin ko dito, pag mas dumadami yung objective na gusto mong i-achieve, it the research becomes very difficult to do or the it becomes very difficult to answer the question so i would suggest maximum 3 especially um and this is true not just for k12 students but for most researchers the more focused the better end point is what is the outcome that you want to measure and dito I would suggest kung pwedeng isa, isa lang. Kasi ang point is you need to be able to pose a question and you need to answer a question. So pag masyadong madami, magiging very complicated ang iyong research. So example, ito, um, katulad nito, this is the objective. Yung, in relation to the, to the study that I mentioned a while ago, dito the objective, and Pay attention to how it was stated. It says, objective, to investigate whether this drug, pertuzumab, when added to this drug, will improve outcomes among patients with HER2 positive breast cancer. So, ang kanyang, invest, ang kanyang objective ay to investigate whether this drug improves the outcome for this patient. Yan ang obje general objective. Pero yung endpoint, ito, one endpoint only. Ang, ang gusto niyang mal, ang, ang endpoint or thing to measure is this, is the, what we call, what we call um, recurrence rate, basically. So ito yon parang, sinodkat ko lang dito. It says, disease-free survival event at three years. So what do you notice? Ito, it tells you exactly what you are measuring and when. So yun ang difference between objective and out and uh, endpoint. Ito sinasabi niya, ito, she wants to investigate the outcome. Dito, sa endpoint, sinasabi mo na exactly what outcome and when. Okay, so practical tips. Um, dito, you will need to, sa, ma, uh, sa, sa ma materials and methods, basically, you need to write step by step or describe in detail how you intend to answer the question. And for this reason, important, again, good question. If possible, one or two questions only. And then, you will need to detail step by step how you need how you will in answer this particular question but why is it important because it will allow others to understand your research to replicate your research and verify your conclusion and this is what drives research the next practical tip is if possible use already standard systems of naming or numbering or use standard measuring tools, survey tools. Uh, kung available, use the standard ones. Kasi mas mahirap gumawa ng panibago. Don't invent, don't, we, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Next is that, ito, it will be described in, in the next uh, lecture, so I will not focus on it. Um, describe your um, laboratory and analytical methods step by step. If possible, com consult with someone who has this statistical background. So, because kahit anong research, importante ito yung tinatawag natin na statistics. For students, especially for young students, and ako, es ginagamit ko din to, merong ito, I, I included some links that you can use, which I also use, kasi it's very, very helpful, very visual um, description of uh, of statistics, dito may mga description how you get a, the sample size, how you determine how many um, uh, uh, subjects you need to include in your study, and much more. So I will 
highly suggest, highly recommend these two. Very um, nice for uh, K-12 students. Um, reminder lang for um, if in case you, some of the research projects will need to involve human subjects or mga either classmate nyo or kapamilya ka kasama sa community, important, very, very, very important, informed consent. Um, may I included here some links kung saan kayo pwedeng kumuha ng template. Um, you need to ensure that first, do no harm. Okay? And harm can mean, um, let's say, yung mga sinasabi natin, side effects of, uh, let's say, chemicals or drugs. Harm can also mean revealing data. Bisa sabihin, kanyari, may sinama kang kaibigan mo sa iyong research. Tapos, Yung, yung research question mo eh kumalat sa buong school or na naiwan mo sa isang lugar at nakalagay doon ang pangalan ng iyong sudyan, yung, yung classmate mo o yung kaibigan mo who failed in this research. E di, ano na yun, harm din yun. Kasi yung data na shinare niya in the context of a research ay unnecessarily na isa na ibigay sa ibang tao na hindi included sa research. So, importante, informed consent. Data privacy. So, kung pagka, pagka mag-conduct kayo ng survey, make sure na walang nakalagay doon um, na unnecessary data that will identify who answered the survey question. Okay? Now, um, as we reach the end of our um, uh, topic, ito, practical items how you uh, translate your idea to reality. So we've discussed about defining your research question. We've, we have discussed about step-by-step step how you will um, try to answer your research question. Ito, important considerations, practical aspects, timelines. Um, I wrote here, never underestimate the time that you need to accomplish each step. So, isama mo na dito yung preparatory work, isama mo na dyan yung actual time you need to conduct the work, isama mo yung actual analysis ng iyong research work, isama mo din yung writing and presentation ng iyong work. So, think about your deadlines and make sure na meron kang um, realistic timeline to, to complete your research. Why? Because your time is precious, your time is money. Okay? Budget considerations. Um, Pag-isipan mo kung, okay, kunyari, yung research mo pala, kailangan gawin sa isang laboratory. May bayad ba yung laboratory? Paano ka pupunta dun sa laboratory na yun? Magko-commute ka? O yung pagpumunta ka dun, syempre, kakain ka. Lahat yan kasama sa research budget. Kasi, Ano yan? Kailangan nating i-take in consideration. Apart from that, kailangan mo ba ng equipment? Ano, bibili ka ba ng equipment? Bibili ka ba ng materials? O kung pupunta ka sa Divisoria to, to get a few things, magkano yon? Magkano ang price difference ng bawat material na kailangan mo for iyong, for iyong um, for, let, let's say, a device that you want to do? Day-to-day -to -day tools, bond paper, o oh, internet subscription, yan, kailangan din yan pag-isipan kasi nagpo-factor in yan little by little. Tapos, kunyari, materials and publication, kunyari, kailangan pala i-co-compile mo ang iyong research sa isang parang, ano ba yun, um, uh, sa isang parang book format, o may bayad din yun. So, kailangan nating pag-isipan yan, how you will do it. Survey, kung online survey o paper survey, O, kailangan mo bang bayaran yung survey tool? O, kailangan mo mag-print mag, mag out at i-distribute? Ayun. So, yan mga day-to-day -day needs na minsan din nakakalimutan natin, pero importante. Finally, re references and bibliography. Um, ito, proof that you have really tried to understand your research question and helpful for you to document um, the knowledge gaps. So, important that you are able to cite the material to the rightful author. Um, and here are the 
the, 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 the times when you need to cite a reference. Okay? So when you quote directly, when you summarize another person's idea, or when you use specific data, information, images, graphs. May mga standard methods on how to write your references. I particularly find this very helpful to use Mendeley.com kasi ano na siya, free naman to, ha? hindi to walang bayad ito. So ano na, may, may ways to um, include your reference and create a bibliography automatically. So I really find this very helpful. I really find this very helpful. Um, pay attention to the students. It's not about um, it's it's not about um, uh, how many bibliography or how many references that you have used. Importante dito yung relevance at kung naintindihan mo ba yung binasa mong uh, mga references and how they are used to answer or to define your research question. So, as a summary, anong kailangan sa isang research proposal? Um, you need a clear title that includes the scope, the population, and the intervention of your study. You need a very good um, and what we say compelling introduction and literature review. Ang aim nito is to show the gaps in the knowledge. It's, it should be able to state the potential impact of your research, and it should be able to focus focus very well your research question. Be smart when you write your objectives. Has to be again specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Materials and methods. These are the key points that you need to say in your materials and methods target population and how many you will um, you will um, be that will be included in your research and why okay study endpoints if possible just have one just have one um, it has to be detailed and step by step and you have to have a good analysis plan ito ibig sabihan yung how you will try to understand and uh, your data, okay? Um, usually, kailangan, kailangan mo i-factor in ito, timelines. And then, um, know your deadlines. So, alam mo kung kailangan, kailan ka dapat makapag-submit ng mga specific requirements. And then, the budget. You need to think about or anticipate ano yung mga kakailanganin mo for your research. And finally, your references and bibliography. It's good to have a robust and relevant bibliography. So thank you for your attention and I would like to hear from you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ma'am Carmela, for that uh, lecture. So. Guys, especially the mentees, if you have questions, this is the time to open your microphones now. And uh, Mom Carmela is really uh, happy to answer all of your queries. So, guys. So especially the mentees who are currently working on their research proposal, this is the time that you might want to ask Dr. Mela something. Uh, hi, Carmela. Jonas here. First of all, apologies for earlier um, mm -hmm. intervention, Kanina. No, I forgot I was not muted. <laughs> uh, but uh, no can I just no ask? You know, all right. Um, but uh, can I ask just two questions though, on behalf of my mentees? Because uh, most likely, medyo pa siguro sila, but um, we've already talked about this and um, they're concerned kasi about uh, the things that I'm going to ask. Now, the first one is kasi pandemic season, you know, the planning of uh, the research topic is would, uh, would be... Um, harder since technically hindi sila magkikita silang tat, you know, yung, yung mga mentees ko silang tatlo uh, every day. 
um, what's like a good way to approach this problem in trying to settle everything uh, despite being in long distances and online? Should they meet at least once a week? Should they, um, you know, maintain communication lines uh, all the time? Uh, what would you suggest for that? Yeah, Jonas, thank you for your question. No? Um, ang, ang, ang suggestion ko is that if there are three people or like a group involved um, in doing research, you always, so, um, kung dapat nilang establish ano yung line of communication na, na, that works for them. So, kung, so now, ang setting natin is nasa pandemic, so online tayo, no? So, is it by email that they are able to work best? Is it through WhatsApp? Is it through Messenger? So, ito muna, siguro parang dapat nila maintindihan. First, ano yung best way of communication that really works for them? So, um, yan. The next point is that, um, of course, it would help kung meron silang yung parang uh, shared um, document. Um, I, I don't know if the, the students are using the Google Drives or um, yung ganitong platforms kasi it's good when uh, all the three or um, several people are able to look in one document na para literally everybody is on the same page. Tapos everybody can be, will be able to provide comments. So there will always be time for like discussion, and then there is time needed to actually implement the discussion. So, iba sabihin nito, kunyari, um, I would say na dun sa preparatory work, especially when you are doing the research planning, I think na ito kakailangan ng potentially once, uh, parang once a week or maybe two times a week um, or at to stretch it maybe once in two weeks they should have time to to talk as in really talk pero kailangan meron silang enough time in between to actually do or implement what they have talked about so to answer your question na how often they should talk it i would say na dun sa dun sa preparatory part I would say once a week, stretching it out maybe two times a week, uh, two times, um, uh, two times, uh, once every two weeks. Pero kung mas, mas, um, mas kaya pa nila, at least two, two times a week. Um, kasi kailangan merong time in between for them to actually do the work. Yan ang aking point of view, Jaan. Um, what what do you think about it? Palagay mo ba it, it answers your question? Um, yeah, actually, it uh, definitely answers the question. And um, mm -hmm. I really want to put this out because this is also done in other mm -hmm. works, I guess. No, yung yeah. mag-meeting once a week, putting in a shared drive. It's very, very important. And siguro sila, hindi pa nila na-explore yung mga ganyang possibilities. So uh -oh. um, that's, that's great. Yeah. Oh, ang ang kung hindi kaya yung ano, kung hindi kaya ang um yung shared drive. Another thing is dapat siguro parang may mayroon kayo parang pwede silang mag-set ng mga rules in terms of let's say specific thing. Nyawe magse-send ng email tapos may attachment, 'di ba? Na siguro yung kanya chapter 1. There has to be what we call a naming or a versioning control. Ibig sabihin Yung title nung iyong doc, para lang makita natin sino na yung nakapag-review o sino na yung nakapag-comment dito sa particular document na to. Yung kanyari, chapter 1, tapos nakalagay um, chapter 1, tapos uh, ako, I do this every time. I do this when I, I need to sort out a lot of documents. Chapter 1, tapos nakalagay date, yung date ng kung kailan mo sinend. So, kanyari, like, let's say today is uh, November 7. Tapos, lalagay ko yung initials ko, CC. Tapos, yung next na mag-review nung document, um, lalagay yung initial niya, kanyari, 
it's you, JD. So, nakalagay na gano'n. So, um, so, yung 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 title ng mga attachments importante na merong parang what we call version control kasi kailangan ting malaman kung okay um, sino yung sunod sunod na magre review at what document we are speaking about so I would say in relation to that maganda na as a group mayon kayong parang rules na na how you will share documents um, sino yung mauuna parate o sino yung final na magre-review. Tapos, maybe, kanyari, meron kang chapter one, tapos marami nag-comment. At the end, kailangan kayong magkaroon ng discussion o oh, ano yung final na, um, ano yung, ano yung, ano, ano yung final na document na gagamitin natin. Something like that. O ano yung final decision dun sa mga parang comments o questions na dumating dun sa, sa group. Parang ganun. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. really great. No, thank you for that answer. Mm -hmm. The second question okay. I'd like to ask, because it's in relation to deadlines. So uh, mm -hmm. perhaps these kids they're gonna be finishing at around May. Um, yeah. Considering that, uh, very clear deadline. Uh -oh. Yeah. How mm -hmm. long? How long do you think should they? Uh, have as a buffer between that deadline and let's say the last day that they should be doing the research. Uh, okay. So May, May. So ilang months na ba? So December, January, February, March, April, May. So six months. So ang masasabi ko dito ay, ito yung ito yung nabanggit ko kanina about um, understanding how what data you need to collect and then how how long you actually need to observe something para makita mo yung result na hinahanap mo. So, it means for the students, first of all, kailangan um, dun sa planning of the research, kailangan may idea na kayo na it can, you, you cannot conduct a research na six months bago mo makita yung result. So, for example, I don't know, mga chemical experiments or let's say, ito yung mga, mga mentors who have worked in the lab. Um, kunyari, nag-observe ka ng bacteria, tapos yung bacteria pala na yun, six months bago mag-generate ng uh, new kinds of colonies, hindi, hindi mo pwedeng gawin yung research na yun in this context kasi may pala ang submission. So, ibig sabihin nito, yung, yung, um, yung, yung mga students, they need to pay attention na we are in November now, tapos Christmas na. In the Philippine setting, alam natin ng Christmas, two weeks automatic may bakasyon ka na dyan. And many places will probably not be open or available. Many will be, I don't know, probably may holiday. So yun, isipin mo yun. Yung November hanggang December, okay, probably this gonna be your planning stage. Tapos, uh, ito Jonas, ano na, parang practical, as in talagang parang practical ko na iniisip na. Pero, mm -hmm. November, December, probably it's gonna be your planning stage. Tapos, January to March, should prob or January, February, March at the latest, probably that's your actual conduct of your study. And then, March, to April, um, actually, this needs to be your time that you actually that you actually write your research. So, I would I would revise it. I would say November, December is probably your planning. January, February should be the time you can conduct your research. March has to be nag analyze ka na ng iyong result. And leave one month for the writing and the sort of publication. You don't want, as much as possible, I would suggest not to get too close to the deadline. So I usually, ako, when I do my stuff then, parang, I usually leave two weeks before or a week before or kung kaya a month before, before the deadline. Yun. So... That's how I would think about it in this context. 
So, ibig sabihin yung mga students, kailangan, kailangan nilang pag-isipan na, okay, probably you only have actually two months to three months to actually conduct your research. And you need to, to have at least a month to probably try to analyze your results. And then one month to write. All right. Well, yeah, uh, what do you think? I would, I would like to ask the others how they how they feel about that. Kaya ba yun? <laughs> yeah, um, guys, feel free to uh, no, to comment on that because uh, kayo yung gagawa ng mismong mga projects niyo. Eh. Did anyone mm -hmm. from, siguro, from the mentees uh, chime in? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a good it's um, a good thing to think about, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, well, um we're currently po working on our research po for and uh, for our defense na po. So um kailangan na po namin po is tips on the RRL mostly nar mostly narrowing down on what topics to read. Kasi po ang may, kasi po ang main Goal po namin is ano is killing bacteria causing causing halitosis po. Mm -hmm. So nasang step na kayo, my dear. Uh, Felicity, yeah. Uh, which which step are you in? Na, na, nagawa niyo na ba yung uh, you are in the part of the research question or nagawa na ang research and now you are defending? Ano ang which step are you in? Um, by November 10, po, I think we're going to be defending and presenting po for the research. S since the teacher isn't replying yet po for our defense. Uh, defense, you mean the research proposal or yung actual research nyo? Tapos na ba ang research or magsisimula pa lang? Um, Na-approve na po kasi yung research and proposal po namin. So presentation na lang okay. po kami. Ah, okay. So, yung inyong research proposal na approve na, but you still need to defend the research proposal. Nagawa nyo na ba yung, pero hindi nyo pa nagagawa yung actual research? Yung, yung actual experiment? Nagawa na ba o hindi pa yung experiment? Um, hindi pa po. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, it and means ano po, na... And, and still, ano po, kasi making the research proposal po daw kasi. Okay, okay. I understand. So, ibig sabihin, um, yung teacher nyo na-approve ang inyong research proposal, tapos merong pang specific step to actually present the research proposal, uh, tapos may, ngayon you, need, you will need time to do the actual experiment. Tama ba yung, yung interpretation ko? Um, opo. Okay, okay, okay. So, ibig sabihin, December, mga November, December, mag, you will defend your thesis, tama? You're waiting for the schedule. Um, opo, ma'am, mayroon na po kami schedule. Ah, okay, okay. So, ngayon, ang question ko sa'yo ay, um, yung, yung, yung experiment on how, uh, could you repeat your research, your, your actual uh, title? Um, wait, nabukulong ko lang po yung file. Okay, okay. Sige, while, uh, while so, Felicity is... Uh, Dr. Yeah, okay. Carmela? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. Hello? Felicity yes, yes. is my mentee. They're, ah, okay. yes, they're working on a project where they're formulating a chewable mouthwash and they're ah, trying to cool. test its antimicrobial properties. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so it means na siguro ang key point na na, na dapat nating malaman dyan is that yung effect, how long you will need to prepare your your setup basically of the, of this, kasi kung you understand mo how much bacteria will be um, uh, uh, prevented by this chewable mouthwash, it means na Dapat alam mo, mayroon kang time to prepare the experimental setup and may time ka 
to observe. Right? Um, yung time mo to observe, it will be related to how, what is the known rate of bacterial growth. Kunyari, ibig sabihin, kung kunyari, yung bacteria A na ino-observe mo, it takes about, let's say, um, well, ako hindi ako, hindi ako nag-work sa lab, no? hindi ako microbiologist, pero let's just hypothetically sabihin natin, it takes one day para ma-observe mo yung, yung uh, growth ng bacteria. Tapos, ang, what probably I'm thinking na for her experiment, pag nilagay mo yung mouthwash, it means na kailangan mo ma-observe kung gano'n ka bilis or um, mag-decrease or ano yung percentage of decrease of the bacteria. Parang na nun, ba? Pero there is a time needed to observe that. Tapos there is, a, I think for laboratory work, there is, a, there is a time needed to actually repeat the experiment para makita mo na talaga nga bang nag-decrease. Yung, yung bacteria. So, yun yung mga things na dapat mong i-pay attention. Yung experimental setup, tapos yung duration of the time that you need to observe, and yung iyong ano, data gathering, um, yung, yung, yung validation ng iyong result. So, yan ang palagay ko key factors sa iyong um, sa timetable. Now, when you speak, you, you mentioned, Felicity a while ago mentioned they're trying to focus on the research um, question. Yun yung probably gusto kong i-emphasize. Choose only one question. One, maximum, maximum three. Kasi pag masyadong maraming questions, tatagal yung time to do the research. And if you only have six months um, from now until May, it's it's better to be simple and it's better to be um, practical about the research question. So yun. Kung pwede mong narrow down to one question is better. One good question. Uh, thank you, Miss. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Um, thank you for. Okay. Um, okay. Mayroon tayong mga mentors na lab experts talaga eh. So, baka makakatulong din sila dyan. So. Yeah. Oh, um, Carmela, one more question pala. No? Kasi you mentioned Mendeley. And um, I've used Mendeley naman din. Yeah. I was doing my experiments with uh -oh. my masters. Uh, because, and mm -hmm. you mentioned three, no? Uh, MLA, APA, and um, we'll see that one for. Chicago? Chicago, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what's your favorite uh, no, format? To be honest, Jonas, for this one, um, in the context of my work, I actually, um, and kaya ko ginagamit yung Mendeley kasi madaling mag-switch from one style to another. The thing is, I base it on the journal where we will submit. So, bawat iba-ibang journal, iba-iba yung requirement nila. Ito medyo mas advanced na ng konti for the K-12 students, no? Kasi, as I mentioned a while ago, if you, pag natapos mo na yung research mo, you need to publish it, no? Uh, you need to share it. So, in the context of our work in uh, cancer research, we always need to submit it to uh, different journals. Bawat, ibang, bawat isang journal, iba-ibang requirement nila. So, minsan, mga iba gusto nila van yung APA, MA, AMA, Vancouver style. So yun ang susundin ko. And that's the reason why I use Mendeley kasi nyare yung yung original publication namin is nakasulat in naka ang style na ginamit namin is APA. Tapos ang kailangan pala ng next journal ay Vancouver. I can just click the whole thing and it it changes the style. Um another thing is that um I think for 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 uh, I, I to be honest I don't know by heart the different yung ano no, yung differences nila no so usually the teachers I think will specify okay use this particular style um so I think the non and yeah depending then dun sa kung saan mo gustong i-submit so 
I I don't have a particular preference. Sinusunod ka lang yung kung ano yung requirement ng journal, for example. Agreed, agreed. I mean, and, and Saka, to question. be honest, yet, uh, yes, please, yes, please. Hi, yeah, kasi like in my case, I, I was, um, when I was doing my, my research, tatlong formats din yung pinagamit, eh, CSE, uh, Harvard, tsaka Elsevier, Dumerical. Uh, and yeah, Mendeley was like very quick to move, you know, just move things around, which was really, really great. Yeah, I was curious about your thoughts on Mendeley and how how the uh, the, the formats would uh, be impacted. Mm -mm. I mean, how your research be impacted in the formats. Yeah, and to be honest, Jonas, ako din hindi ko na parang hindi ko na pinipay attention masyado yung parang um, I, I rely very much on yung automatic functions nila talaga and so hindi ko na masyadong alam kung what's the difference um, mm -hmm. the way I use Mendeley is that kunyari may nagsinusulat kaming paper inoorganize ko yung aking mga lahat ng kinokollect kong references according to the paper o kaya so meron akong mga folders doon Tapos, okay, kanyari, I, I, we wrote a paper about adjuvant, um, like breast can, early breast cancer. So, lahat ng papers ko related sa early breast cancer, ilalagay sa folder na yun. Tapos, kanyari, next na paper isusulat namin is about, let's say, metastatic or stage 4 breast cancer. So, lahat ng papers ko na related doon, ilalagay ko doon sa folder na yun. Para pag, kanyari, binalik kang, kanyare kailangan namin i-revise yung publication, alam ko na kung saan folder ako babalik. Parang ganun. So that's how I try to organize our stuff. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Bo. <laughs> yeah. Um, ang, ano ko, the, ang question ko din pala sa'yo, Jonas, is that, as, and maybe question ko din to other mentors, um, how are you dealing, uh, how are you dealing with uh, communication with your mentees? Do you, um, do you actually, like, which platform do you use and how often do you contact the uh, do you contact them and um how do you provide your um your feedback sa kanilang research plan is it through an email is it through um discussions how do you go about it like maybe to okay. you jonas and to others as well right uh for my team and i believe my team's here no? uh what we do is that I do send communications first to them via Facebook Messenger to see if uh, my if there are progress uh, major, and if there is, I would set a time for them to to for for us to meet and see you know what have been the uh, the changes that have been made, what are the challenges have that have been um, encountered, uh, what has their response have been. And then if there were like anything that still lacks like uh, a proper response or an appropriate uh, way to move forward, that's when I step in and say, okay, this is probably the best way you can move with it. And uh, let's see how it goes. Parang ganun siya. And then um, when they're usually it, it's hap it happens like once a week. Um, pero when there is a need naman to meet them, uh, due to like another major development that's not uh, like really far off, then um, I would definitely set time for them to I know to uh, meet up and see uh, to see what the latest development. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you for that. So at least Facebook, kayo Facebook Messenger, kayo mag nakakapag usap Yep. Mm -mm. Okay, okay, thanks for that. Um, okay, Bo, so there are some questions that came in uh, in the chat room. Okay, so, yeah. uh, so the first one is, uh, do we really have to follow every step or thing we put in the research plan? So I think this question is a little bit ahead of time. So something, if something might happen during the course of it. Okay. So, um, I would say na, first of all, um, yung binigay kong structure dito sa research plan, 
Um, this is the usual structure that um, most research plans that we review um, are, are structured. Of course, I understand na um, in the context of your different schools or universities and the, 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 in the context of the K-12, um, um, merong specific requirements or may specific templates din kayo um, for the research plan. But the, the, the point here is that if the question about do, we, do you need to follow it step by step, I would say na the best way is actually to, to do it step by step. Kasi ito yung inexplain na kanina na magsisimula lahat with the research question and then you you need to understand how you can narrow down your research question so you on it covers your introduction and literature review so that's the first step you cannot jump into the let's say materials and methods or references and bibliography kung hindi mo pa na define kung ano yung iyong research question kasi you will be lost yung yung research question um, kaya yun yung unang topic sa lecture series natin. Kasi yun yung iyong guide. Yun yung iyong guide. Parang lighthouse. Parang um, what, what we call it, yung, yung North Star. Yung research question mo has to be the first step. Dahil lahat, lahat dun magde-depend. Okay? Then, the next step is yung methodology, yung iyong objectives, and yung iyong endpoints. Yon, even more specific, specify, specify, specify. Kasi kung hindi ka specific, and if you did not follow the step, malilito ka at the end. Okay? At maririal, and I've seen this a lot of times sa mga papers that I have reviewed. Um, and it also happened to me as a researcher. Um, at the end, kung kailang ka na nag-date, nag-collect ng data, nag-analyze ng data, may ma ma mo, may kulang. May kulang pala. May hindi ka nakuhang information. And you need to redo it again. Uh, literally, it happened to me. Ako, ang nang nangyari sa akin is that I did not use a, a, a proper research, uh, a proper informed consent form. And in international research, kapag wala kang proper informed consent for a study na involving patients, you cannot publish. So, I had to redo my research and with a new set of patients using an informed consent. But it paid off kasi yung research na yun na ginawa ko, that was what propelled me to to be where I am right now. Pero yun yung point. If you do not do it step by step, at the end, baka malito kayo. So baka ma makakita mo ang daming unanswered things. So you that's why it's important to 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 do it step by step para little by little you're able to build on your progress from the first step. Yun, siguro yun yung aking um, key message with the research plan. It, yung, yung, yung format or yung template, it will depend largely on your school requirement. Pero the, the key point is that you as a researcher need to be very clear of your question and your uh, strategy on how you and so yon step by step yon step by step okay so basically there's another question here Paul. so where do we find a statistician to help with sample size and can we actually ask the mentor for help you can uh i, I would uh, i hope uh, the, the different mentors can support this um Statisticians, maybe one one possible thing is try to talk with your research teachers kasi baka may kakilala din silang um, uh, statistician na who are present in your, either your school or in your community. Another thing is that um, yung binigay kong resources sa inyo, 
uh, na there is a brief explanation there. Uh, there. There are basic explanations of basic statistical concepts that may already be, be helpful. Yung binigay kong resources, these are very are free and are available for everyone. Um, so that was very, ano siya, very visual and informative and presented in a very simple way. Kahit ako, I always refer to it kasi minsan ako din, hindi ako, minsan naguguluhan din ako. And of course, um, hopefully some of the mentors can help. Hindi ka, ako, hindi ako statistician. But I can probably help in some of the basic concepts. As I said, for the purpose of your own, uh, of the K-12 and this requirement, potentially it may not need very, very complex statistical um, uh, assessments or um, planning or statistical computations. Pero I think it is very, very good to understand the basic concepts because this is how your research will also be judged. Um, yung result na makikita nyo in your research, let's say, let's say, dun sa question ni Felicity kanina, what if you find out na yesterday there was, um, originally you have 100% of the specific kind of bacteria. And the next day after you put your, your mouthwash uh, ingredient, naging 70% na lang siya, yung bacteria you will need to understand if yung difference na yun was, first of all, real, and first of all, and second, and second is, uy, ito ba ay what we call significant? Um, meron ba talagang effect na nangyari? O this was just by chance? Yun yung, yun yung thing na matutulungan ka ng statistics. So, yun know, ang mga possible resources. You can ask your, your research advisor in school. You can, uh, the mentors of CIDH can potentially help. And the next is that um, the online resources may also be very helpful for the K-12 students. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Carmela, for that. So, do we have any more questions from the group? Okay. I think none. <laughs> if, if not, it's been pretty long and very informative. <laughs> yeah, I think again, thank you, Ma'am Carmela, for that really informative uh, presentation. Because I think even the mentors learned a thing or two from it. Uh, by the way, this, I hope. <laughs> yes, well, uh, by the way, this lecture is being recorded and it will be uh, posted in the Sidhi Facebook page probably this coming Wednesday. And uh, again, okay. thank you very much, uh, everyone, especially the mentees, for being with us uh, today. And um, I hope you guys have a good dinner. <laughs>